Okay, so welcome aboard folks. We'll be starting very shortly and this will be another flight with the A320 checklist that we've been trying to fine tune. Just doing our final setup bits and pieces here and I'll be back with you shortly. Okay, folks, welcome aboard. And uh, the first thing we need to do this morning is to get the actual checklist underway. So let's do that. Right, so cold and dark here at Heathrow. So let's uh, start to go through the motions, see if we can get this bird in the air. Right, so we have the checklist on the right hand side. This is something that I've been uh, kind of working on over the last few weeks or so to, to bring together. And we're gonna work through this as swiftly as we can. And I did this yesterday and I didn't get it didn't go quite as smoothly as I thought, so I might still have some few glitches in it, but I just wanted to start sharing this and uh, and then see uh, what people think of it. So, and uh, right, so let, let's start down the checklist. And so first thing we wanna do is to make sure that uh, all the engine masters are off. So let's do that. So engine master switches are off, check. Okay, so engine mode selector set to normal, engine mode selector is set to normal. Oh, now we need to check to see whether the gear lever is down. Check, gear lever is down. Wipers, are the wipers both off for both the pilot and the co-pilot? The wipers are both off, so that's good. Battery voltage is showing about 25. Uh, still not quite sure whether that's right or not, but we'll run with that for right now. And so the batteries for one and two are on. Check, is external power available? Yes, it is. So we can, we have external power available, which we can see there on the checklist. Is it something we need to make sure of? So we would probably request that if it wasn't available. And now we need to go to uh, external power on. External power is on. And we need to uh, wait for three clicks to confirm that the power is on. And now the next thing we need to do is to do the uh, fire check for the APU. So that's this button here. No. 
for some reason, I don't think we have a sound coming in from the flight simulator. Let's try that again. Okay, there we go. So now we have sound for flight simulator. Sorry about that. Lots of things to figure out as we kind of progress with this stuff. Right, okay, so that's the APU fire test is done. And now we go APU master on. Sorry, this is a bit where we wait for the three <clears throat> blips. And start, APU start is on. Okay, so the next part is to just basically set up the lights around the cabin. So we'll first do the PFD and get the brightness up on these. Uh, fiddly, fiddly, fiddly. Okay, that's good. Uh, PFD and ND. Uh, now we need to do the flight director lights. So that's Okay, done. And now I need to go down and do the uh, floodlights. And the integrated lights there. Ecam upper and Ecam lower. And then we've got some upper integral lights to do, which are the overhead integral lights. So we've got everything nice and bright. And then the other thing we need to do, which I need to add, is to bring up the brightness on the MCDU, because when we're in flight, we need to make sure that you, can, you guys can see that when uh, I'm putting the information into that, uh, which I've missed before in the past. So. Okay, so that's the lights done. We can now move to the next section, which is configuration. So we need to check that uh, parking brake is on. Check. Flaps are up. Confirm. Speed brake down, disengaged. And yeah, or retracted in other words, I think that is. And so in fact, we can't see any white marker there. Uh, probe window heat is set to auto, so auto, so we go back up here, that's this one here, so this is the probe uh, piso heat, I believe, and the window, that's done, and now the nav and logo light is on, and APU bleed is on, which is here, which is here, okay, so bear with me just a moment, I just need to check something here there we go jolly good that all seems to be working fine uh, right next on the checklist is crew oxygen supply so this is the crew oxygen fly over here so we're still in the overhead so that needs to be on that's done and then if we go back over to what is in effect the, uh, what was this next one, is the cockpit record, which is over here, I believe, and that doesn't work, so that's a in-op at the moment. So then we go back up to the overhead again, and we need to set the address, which is the, in effect, the navigation setting. So we go the first one, the third one, and the second one. Check, check, check. And then while we're in the overhead, we want to strobe light to uh, auto which is the midway switch no smoking set to auto seat belts set to on emergency exit arm that's this one here that's the midway setting on that one and now we need to check the lights to make sure there's no faults in any lights and that's the annunciator light check and you can see the whole thing lights up like a Christmas tree and where we'll, we'll actually be able to see any faults if there are any faults so check, that's good, and we can reset that to uh, dim, 
which is what we want there. Okay, anti-ice at the moment, we're all off for wing and both engines. Cabin pressure mode, select off. Uh, cabin pressure mode, which is here, which is, so we want that dark, not showing manual. Uh, ditching is closed. Landing elevation is set to auto. And now we just need to check that the APU bleed is um, right. Now let's go back up here because I think yesterday APU bleed. I don't think I actually started the APU start on. Hmm. Come back to that because I made a mistake yesterday, so I'm just working through and testing all this, so we'll have to see. Right, so uh, let's have a look at the aircon is set there. Uh, the packs are on. Fuel pumps are all on. Now we need to test the engines. Fire test. And the right engine, both turn to charge. Electrical panel check, so we can just go past this. Ventilation panel is checked. No white or amber lights. So we have a generator fault at the moment, so I'm not quite sure why that is. Uh, it's obviously something that I'm doing wrong here. Uh, ah, so the batteries are not on. So I need to check that somehow. I'm, I must be doing that in a, in a wrong sequence or something. Uh, let's go down, have a look at the uh, ECAM pages. Okay, so we need to, uh, where are we now? Uh, fact, let's have a little bit of music on in the background. Uh, while I try and figure out what was going on, there we go. Uh, doors. Check. Hydraulics doesn't work at the moment. Engine oil we can check. So we can go to engine. Engine oil set quantity about 25. And flight controls we can check as well. Good, and the rudders. Full deflection right. All deflection there. Good. Right. Okay. So we now want to set the barometer the, and uh, master caution. I think I'm doing something wrong on the overhead in the wrong sequence, but we'll we'll figure that out. So, so we can set the barometer with B, uh, and we want that to read as. Don't press that. There we go. Hectopascals. And we should. Right, flight directors on both. And then we should see uh, one FD2. And then we need to put uh, constraints on so that we can show in the in the flight plan anything that isn't quite right. So we'll be on arc to start with on navigation display and we'll be on 10 nautical miles for the range. VOR's uh, ADF selectors will leave as is for now and landing system selector will leave as off. Okay, so we should have speed as managed, which is uh, dash dot, dash dot. That's almost a sort of mnemonic that you need to check for that. Increments are set to uh, 1,000, and we need to set the initial height of, say, 5,000 feet for now. We'll come back to that. 
Okay, instrument panel. Let's just check. We need to check our, our the brightness and the PFD is showing as expected. So we've got the climb and nav set to 1FD2 and uh, speed select and the QNH1013. So we're happy with that for now. Uh, standby altimeter. We need to go down to the center console and check 1013, brightness is up, and we're showing about 80 feet off the ground. Let's just go back up here, and we are the same there, so quite happy with that. So standby systems are okay, and the clock, we don't really need to do anything with that at the moment, so uh, come back to anti-skid is on, is on. And now to the radio. So we just want to make sure that we've got VHF selected and the power is on because that oh that's that's one of the new features that they've actually set there. So that's good. And so that I need to change that in in the checklist there because that never used to work. Uh, and weather radar is set to uh, weather, which it is there and now we need to go back up to the to the uh, ecams and status so we're showing TCAS is in off at the moment which we'll get to that I guess and we need to cycle the pressures so don't think there's anything untoward there and Right, so next bit we need to do is set the thrust levers to idle. We need the engine master switches all off and check. Engine master switches are off. Engine mode selector is set to normal. Parking brake off and on to check. Uh, gravity extension, we can't check that and ATC set, so we need to go to the Heathrow ground, and that should have set that there. So uh, hopefully we don't get too much uh, chatter in the background. So that'll be good for now. Uh, ATC is set, weather system is set to SIS1. Let's just go down so we can have a look, closer look at that. That's that side so we do a left on that one right now we want to load the flight plan so we'll go over to the uh, MCDU right so first thing I would do is go to flight plan uh, not flight plan in it so we're showing nothing at the moment in terms of a, a route now, I've had some mixed experiences with this, so what I will do is put in EGHF to EGKK, and it doesn't matter what this is, and submit that, because, okay, and return. Right, what I've found is that if, if you don't, that kind of resets the whole thing, although it looks like it's reset, I've, I just have mixed experiences where, it, it's not actually been reset, so so that's good. Right, so we'll go to the flight plan now. So we go to the menu, and we go to ATSU, AOC menu, and then we need to do a initial data request and import data. Okay, so you can see we've got our flight there from EGLL down to LFBO, which is what we're looking at doing. And now we need to press init and press init request again. And you can see that fills in all the rest of the data there. So in fact, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll add the cost index here of say 10. But to be honest, I'm not really sure what, what that all does, but we'll, we'll do that for now. So that's the route brought in. 
uh, bear with me two ticks and right okay so that's the route so now we need to check the flight plan to give it a glance over one of the things that you're looking for here is uh, that we've got the airways in and that second bit we did where we clicked init request if you don't do that you don't get the the airways in so and it just just doesn't do what you're expecting it to do so we're going to take off from EGLL and we want to make sure that we end up at LFBO which is is what we're expecting to do so I'm quite happy with that so the flight plan is in we've checked the route right now we need to uh, go to our flight plan which we've got and do do the fuel so what we're going to do now is go to MCDU at Sue again and this is all on the checklist there AOC menu performance and weight balance and now what we do is load the fuel so that's pretty much what we had in the flight plan when I worked it all out a sim brief and now what we need to do is go and sort out the actual uh, fuel uh, levels and weight and balance so even though we've loaded it let's have a look we've got 7367 so so that's good I'm quite happy with that what we now need to do so we, we can go with we're not going to split the fuel between the two tanks we now need to set the weight and balance for the payload and the payload was 17.6 so we have a look at the payload um, we've actually got it as where are we 9,194 which is not right so the payload doesn't actually load and we need to make it 17.6 so what we're going to do is double click this clear it double click we're going to clear all these or we can do select all backspace click select all backspace select all backspace and we're only going to put baggage in the forward and rear baggage compartments so 8600 and for some reason I have a problem where it doesn't pick up the 8 when I put that in so and then in the rear baggage control all the first character or the first number I mean so um, 88600 Let's try this again. 8600. Yeah, no, it doesn't do it for some reason. I don't know why that is. Okay, so happy with that. So if we come down here, um, so it's not, so it's 8, half of 17 is 85, and oh, it's 88. That's what we need to do here. 88 is half of 17.6 there we go and we've got our 17.6 so we won't worry about the extra overage now we need to make a note of the 22.83 because that's our center of gravity right so that is our weight and balance done and now what we need to do is go back to performance and so initial da, 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 read the instructions uh, go to the right no hang on let's get this right let's back up a moment so need to go to init Go back to performance. Right, hang on. Let's back up from here. There, MCDU, ATSU, AOC menu, 
Edit pressures, and then I think we have to take Hmm. Pressures review. Doesn't feel quite right. Okay. Ah. Uh, right. Okay. What we're doing. Performance. In it, scroll across, and now let's bring in. So we click that twice. Ah, uh, this is what I was looking for the fuel planning. So we press fuel planning, confirm. There we go. All right. So, and there we go. So we've now got the information that we need to work out the takeoff speed. So zero fuel weight is. 58.7, 22.8 for the zero fuel weight center of gravity. And the takeoff weight is 67.9. Good, right. Make a note of those, done that. Now we're gonna go and do the calculations. Uh, online so uh, eg out out let's get the meta for that will be flaps one and we need to put the so at the moment you can't see what i'm doing because i can't bring this in at the moment but uh i'm on the uh webpro.cz a320 I will figure out how to get that in and we'll work the rest out from there. Okay. Uh, so we're going to be 27, 27 right. Calculate. Okay. So it's going to be flaps one, stabulator up 1.2, flex is 65. It says these speeds are 152, 155, 156. Don't believe that, but that's fine. So we go back to our checklist then, so we can mark those as done. Jolly good. Right, so now we're going to go to the performance tab in the MCDU. And we're going to enter the flaps first. Uh, performance tab. Here we go. Right, so flaps are going to be one, and we'll enter the flaps in there. Now to get the uh, trim, we need to do a forward slash, and then up UP 1.2. The forward slash will tell it to insert it after the first one that we put in. There you go, so that's that and our flex temperature was 65. So we'll enter that. And now very fortunately we can bring in the speed. So click it once, shows it there, insert it. And same again there. Okay, so that's that done. So we've inserted those. Uh, we've got a Aronus item there which I need to sort out in the checklist okay so we're doing good so we're pretty much there so we're now at engine start back in the overhead we're going to do uh, beacon on that tells everybody outside I believe that we're actually going to do something right so external power to off now I think this is where it went wrong yesterday because everything shut down Okay, so we still just seem to be running at the moment, so that's good. 
let's run with it. External power off. Fuel pumps are all on. We now need to switch the ignition to on. And let's just check because this is where it went wrong yesterday, but it seems to be going okay today. And we're going to start with engine two. Quickly check just to make sure. And we can see that we're increasing on N2 and not M1 at the moment because I don't think we've got enough from N2 yet. We can see we're spawning up, so that's all quite good. So let's just check the PFDs and we can now see that the while they're spawning up that the uh, navigation display, all the satellite connections are all kicked in. And we can see here that uh, 140 is our V1 speed, is it? Sorry, I think it's V1. Okay, so just while that's doing that, we can, uh, let's just, there. Right, okay, so right, let's now go back to and check the engines. So we're almost 20, almost 60, so that's fine. So we can now go back down here and we can engage engine one. So we do engine two first and then engine one. What we can also do here is check the uh, pressures. So oil pressure is good in engine two and we'd be expecting to see the oil pressure increase in an engine as it is engine one. So, so we can now go back to engines. Yeah. All good. Everything's increasing as we'd expect. Right, engine one master on, engine one oil is checked. Engine mode now set to normal. Fiddly, some of those things. Overhead probe heat is set. Uh, where are we probe heat? Why can't I see that? Probe, 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 probe. Um, oh, I can only spot that straight away. Uh, mode set. Ah, here we are. Probe heat is set on. If we're less than 10 degrees, which we are at the moment, APU bleed is off. And I think, is this where it went wrong yesterday? Shouldn't go wrong. Don't know why. APU bleed is off. Anti-ice engines, so we don't need that at the moment. And APU master is off. Okay, we still have uh, everything connected and we've got a TCAS warning here. So we, we'll figure that out in a minute. So altimeter is set and checked. Standby instruments are checked. Radios set and checked, so we'll now tune in to uh, ground services. Ah, no, actually, no, our next one will be go back to clearance. Yeah, so our next one, uh, we'll need to do weather, so that'll be the next one. And anti skid is set on. Yes, right, have a quick listen to the weather. Two seven two three. Two point one three. Q one eight two nine or decimal nine or two. ILS runway two seven right and ILS runway two seven left in use. Landing at the two seven right. Still active. Okay, so it's information India. Okay, auto brakes are set to max, which is here. 
Right, let's just uh, make the... We'll get rid of the... Come on, shush. Alright, we'll go back to that in a minute. Shush. Okay, right, auto brakes are set max. Flaps are set one. Speed brake is armed. Flight controls check. So for this, again, we come up to here, press flight control. Nothing untoward there, and rudder, all deflection. Done. Pitch trim. And so what we were on ours, now I'm never really sure whether we should actually set this here, but we actually entered a pitch setting of 1.2. So I've set that now there, but I'm not sure whether the computer actually does that. So. Rudder trim, check, nothing to do there. Autopilot is off at the moment. Auto thrust, we hope, um, or Arthur as I call it, should kick in once we uh, climb out. So flight directors, check on. Uh, ILS, no, that's fine. Anti-ice as required, strobe switch to on, strobe switch to on, and FMC, basically we just need to just clear the screen, and get back to the flight plan in effect, uh, because that's what we're going to be doing now. Okay, so we would be, um, uh, we'd contact, and uh, I guess something like uh, uh uh, Festival 500 uh, request uh, clearance as filed to Toulouse and they would give us our clearance and then we would switch over to uh, radio back to clearance so go back to ground always a good idea to have a look out the window because we do have the engines running now just to make sure that we're uh, ground services and what we would do is shift P, I think it is, to request. Oh, Heathrow ground, let's tune into these guys, that's better. Uh, request pushback. Heathrow ground, VAW, Bravo Alpha 7055, requesting pushback. So, Bravo brakes on the pedal. Brakes off. Out the window, we need to see when we're moving. Nose taxi light to on. Uh, to taxi. Part brake off, pedal brakes release. Flight controls check. Have I released the brakes? Yeah, brakes are off. There we go, we're off. Flight controls check. Head in. Uh, so we've got dash ball, dash ball on the autopilot check. Weather radar is set on. So we need to turn to the left. Heathrow ground, BAW, Bravo Alpha 7055, requesting pushback. Weather radar is set on. I think that's right. Engine instruments check. Everything's looking good. Push back straight. Request. Nav instruments set. Autopilot set check. Cabin.
Okay, push back stop. Back in the overhead while that's happening. Landing lights are set on. Runway turn lights are set on. Takeoff configuration. Uh, Takeoff config. Maybe that's not working. Uh, ah, so what we should do here is we're in the aircraft with the engine running. Quick look outside. We should probably have the brake on for a minute. Put the part brake on while we just faff around on this last bit. So what have we got here? So take off config. Take off memo, which I think is here. Uh, I'm not sure what that is. So off. Hmm. Okay, let's run with it. Bird strike visual check and brakes on the pedal. Clearance. We request taxi to part straight out. And strobe light is on. Nose light to take off. So acknowledge taxi clearance, so we're cleared to hold short and transponder is set auto and RPTG is set Oh right, that's a tap. So that is there. Uh, rudder trim reset just to make sure that we are definitely on zero and taxi. There is so much to get in this thing in the air. Okay, so. Now what we need to do is have a look down and brake is off, feet on the brakes. Right now. Where is the runway? I think what we needed to do was we turn around here. So we should have had a push back the other way. And there's the runway. So it looks like quite a nice taxi to the runway. I think it's, is it all the way down there? Ah, right, okay, so we need to turn right and double back here.
So now we need to tune to Heathrow Tower. So we're coming up to our hold short sign. Right, here we are, two seven right hold short. Parking brake is on. And right, so now we need to do is tune the tower, request takeoff clearance. Heathrow Tower, BAW Bravo Alpha 7055, ready for departing straight out at runway 27 right. BAW Bravo Alpha 7055, cleared for takeoff runway 27 right, straight out departure approved. line up take the slightly wider line here always a big fan of using all the runway that's available there we go and stop center line roughly Stop there. Brakes are on. Okay, so we'll be stick forward to 100 knots. We're going to thrust to 40. Uh, check the engine temperatures and press chrono. Brakes off and off we go. Let's put the donut round at 40. Engine chasing that quite nicely. And we'll go to the clock and press the timer, press the chrono, back facing straight, on the foot brakes, full power, and here we go. See if we can get a bit straight on the runway, that might help. Okay, so we're looking for 140 and rotate. We need to make the climb positive rate of climb. Gear up. We need to be. Flaps up. Also, throttle is engaged. And also, pilot engage. And back to throttle climb. And we can see that in the uh, flight manager enunciator, is it? In the FMA? Okay, let's change frequency. Heathrow Tower, BAW, Bravo, Alpha, 7055, frequency change. 
So. The bit I'm not completely sure on is how to do the heights from here in out. So we can go to our, let's go to the checklist. So we need to stick for what's all done. We can go all the way down our checklist, chrono set, brakes off, positive rate of climb, land the gear up, auto thrust has come on. Thrust to climb, three brakes, disarm retracted. Flaps are up, flap zero, land the gear up, check. Flaps up, check. Weather radar, we should tilt down. Which we can't do at the moment, so that's fine. Right, let's check that we are following, which it looks like we are now. Somehow, I've had that way to the range was a check, which I've not done. Uh, autopilot check is on, speed 250 knots, 250 knots below 10,000 feet, auto brake is off, auto brake is off, and our next one is ATC, which we're not going to do. Uh, Tune Heathrow approach. Yeah, we will do that. Right, we need to check that we are following the plan. Yeah, looks like we are. So far, so good. So, still in the climb out then. So, we need to check the APU master switch is off. APU master switch is off, nose light is off, check runway turn in lights are off, uh, packs one and two are on, anti ice as required, and then we're waiting for the 5,000 feet, which we are. So we can now do the 5,000 feet checks. So we can set the barometer to standard. Cabin crew release set to 40 for the range on the navigation display. Speed check still 250 kilometers or knots. Climb rate 2000 and we can climb. Right, so I don't know, uh, right. I haven't got as far as working this out, so we're currently uh, max it, and it says flight level 3500. I'm sure we can't climb to that, so Let's just scroll through here. Right, so can it really be climb three thousand five hundred? Sorry, th thirty-five thousand. Hmm. Uh, let's let's just have a look at our our navlog, which we don't have. There's nothing there because we brought it into we brought it into uh, Simbrief. So. Let me go back to Simbrief and have a look there. So I think to Maxif,
right, okay, yeah, so we should be, uh, to max if we should be 6,200. So for Midhurst now, we should be I think twenty thousand one hundred. So we need to make a climb up to twenty thousand one hundred. So below so I think we can two thousand four hundred feet is the climb rate. Right, we're on our way to 20,100 feet, and the computer should take care of that. So we should have been at that by the time we got to Midhurst, apparently. And now we're on our way to Drake. So, how are we doing? Let's have a look out the window. This looks like we're coasting out pretty much over Worthing Littlehampton. in the cockpit. Check the progress on the flight plan. So Midhurst. Uh, right, what we can do now is get back into the main window, as most of the action is taken care of. Ooh, there's a lot there, isn't there, to get this thing in the air, and it hasn't worked too bad. I think I hadn't really planned how to get the climb out done. So I've got, I think I've got most of the prep in the aircraft done to the runway. I just now need to figure out how to do the rest of it. So anyway, we're, we're climbing, we're on our way to 20,000 feet according to the flight plan. 20,100 feet at Midhurst. And then between Midhurst and Drake, let's have a look, look at the flight plan. Uh, so Midhurst and Drake. It's 35 miles, is that right? Is that what it's saying? I think it is. Yeah, so 35 miles, so or 34 miles. 
and then we need to be at flight level. At Drake, thirty-one thousand one hundred. So because we're we're kind of we've missed the window here, we can actually change this to thirty-one. 500 Never know why we don't have a keypad to enter these I suppose you can in the real aircraft doing this wrong. Oh, of course you just switch it to thousands, don't you? Come on, get with the program, Chris. Okay. And that will continue our climb. Now, the thing is, what we need to do, I'll just go back to my checklist. So... Above 10,000 feet, landing lights are off. Landing lights are off. Anti ice as required. We probably should have a look at the engine, shouldn't we, just to confirm that? So, all looks good. I'm sure we check the outside air temperature to actually figure that out, but that's fine. Fasten seat belts as required, so we can take the seat belts, uh, oh, seat belts off. Passengers can get comfortable, start going to the toilet, whatever that is. And the navigation display we need to change to 160. So we can see that we're approaching Drake and by the time we get to Drake, we should be at 31,100 feet. So we're on our way, but it's not a very aggressive climb. But, and so we can go to, nope, okay, let's leave all that as it is. Uh, speed check. Less than 300, that's fine. We'll leave everything as managed at the moment. Because frankly, I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, so we're doing good. We're, we're at least in the air and everything seems to be working. Get an airspace transition. London Center BAW Bravo Alpha 7055 is type Airbus E20 in 27 miles south of Shoreham, flight level 210. Request clearance to transition Charlie airspace. Right, jolly good. Uh, I will be back with you shortly. In the meantime, here's a little bit of music to listen to, and I'm just going to make a cup of coffee.
Hi folks, welcome back to the cockpit. We are just overhead, or just, I guess, south uh, east of La Havre now. So, over France. And so far, so good. Uh, we're progressing rather nicely. Uh, let's have a look at the flight plan. I'll just bring your range. Uh, just acknowledge the radar contact. So we're coming up to to Lima Golf Lima. Let's just have a just have a look. So we need to progress our way up to 35,000 feet now. So let's action that. So we need to go th click that so that we're in thousands. Try again. The right, best thing to do here is to have this so that the flight director is actually facing me. There we go, because we can see what's happening then, so... There we go. Just have a look over here. And let's action that nicely, so we can see that... We're heading up to 35,000 feet, flight level 35. I'm surprised we're not faster but I'm not quite sure why that is. Anyway. So basically coming up on the cruise then, so we know that we're, let's go back to the checklist just for a moment, just to see how we look on that. So we're coming up to the cruise then, so engines check. Let's have a look at the engines just, just to make sure that everything is running. Nothing untoward there. Happy with that. Comms, we've got flight following from Paris. Uh, nav autopilot check, autopilot is on, auto throttle is on. Nav check over here. We seem to be following the flight plan quite nicely. Fuel, uh, where are we? Uh, fuel on board is 8,500. So actually, what do we? I've not done this before. Let's have a look at mm, performance. Estimated fuel on board now is six. And does it tell us on the flight plan? Oh, it says 5.5. So if we go back to our Flight plan, yeah, that's exactly what the, what the estimated fuel on board is at, at this point in the flight plan. And so when I get when I go to look at the flight plan, I'm, I'm looking at the Timbury flight plan in the background for future flights. I'll I'll find a way of bringing this up in the screen as well. Okay, so budget fuel is is good. Navigation accuracy, right? So what we need to do. Uh, rad nav. Uh, oh, that's interesting that these haven't. Ah, uh, these will come in, I think, when we program the approach. I think. Do we go to initial and. So we can see that we're connected there to the sat. to the navigation. Uh, okay, I need to check that for the next flight just to see where, our ah, GPS primary, here we go. 
accuracy is high. That's, so remember that for the future. So we need to program GPS primary. Okay. Uh, flight level max is 3.9. Cruise is 3.500. Let's just go back and see how we're doing on the cruise. Following the flight plan still. Climb into flight level 3.5. Back to the checklist, navigation accuracy. Let's just check we know how to do that in the future again. So that's gonna be, let's go main menu, program. Okay, direct, uh, right, so we're not gonna to touch any of that. That looks like a mystery world in there. And we'll go back to flight plan so that we have that to hand. Uh, nav position, good, cabin temperatures, Check the cabin temperatures. Let's, let's turn it down a little bit, shall we? There we go. There we go, because we can, basically. Right. So now, what we need to do, I think, is to brief our approach. So bear with me. Okay, so we've had a little bit of progress here. We've managed to pull up a Navigraph, which shows us where we are. And, uh, and we're pretty much on the map. Uh, is it the Fair Bernard to our right? Sorry for any French people I'm not pronouncing this that well. I think that's Le Fair Bernard. Which is, sorry, what we need to do here. Let's press that. And get back in the cockpit for a moment. Okay, so I'm gonna now try and figure out what the approach is gonna be into Toulouse, where, let's pull up the overlay as well. So we're nearly halfway.
Right, so what we need to do is figure out our approach. So I'm fairly new to this. Uh, oh, what's there? Sorry, just found something I didn't know was there. And uh, bear with me. A lot of bearing with me with these flights, I'm afraid. So according to uh, the flight plan, we'll be arriving into Toulouse. Okay, so we've been arriving 14 right. So let's see if we can figure this out. So over in Navigraph then. Uh, so it will be uh, 14 right. There we go. So we've done that. I'm not sure what that's done for us. Let's have another look. Ah, oh, there we go. Oh my goodness, what does all that mean? Okay. Uh, ILS runway. Okay. Uh, uh, one four. So that's the one we're going to do. Close. Why have we got all those showing? This is a mystery. Arrivals. Hmm, okay, so let's have a, let's double back up here. So we're arriving, Just jump back into the cockpit for a moment. Go back to the flight plan. So we will be arriving ah uh, Narak. Narak. So what we're gonna do is maybe select our arrivals. Uh ah, we don't have Narak. Ah, from Narak. Narak to runway fourteen. Yeah, okay. So we've got the right one selected, which will be Nara six A. Okay. So we want the NARA 6A. So, what we need to do then is flight plan. Come down to LFBO. Select the arrival. ILS, oh, oh, oh. no, go back. Go back. Arrays. Don't like it when you click Arrays. Arrival. 
14 R. Okay. And any other ah, narrow 6A, that's what we're going to do, that one. No vias, let's insert that. So approach via Ablis, Nara 6A. Let's go back to the flight plan. Ablis, here we go, that's our approach in from Narok, which we didn't have before. And then the next one should be end of flight plan. Okay, let's go and have a look. Probably can't see it at this stage. Oh yeah, okay. That's good. Right, let's go back to the flight plan because uh, top of descent is there. Right, let's go back to my checklist. So, approach briefing. Transition altitude is going to be 5, I think. Or is it 10? Need to figure that out. Um, approach plate review. Okay, so we now need to do... Have a look at the approach plates. So, I'll be back with you shortly.
Right, so the minimum altitude is 689 feet for the ILS 14 left, um, or decision altitude. So we've got that now. Uh, we, we need to check the altimeter. So let's get back in the cockpit just to check where we are with that. Oh, we're turning. Oh my, makes me nervous when I see this because, oh, this is good. Yeah, so we're turning to Evpok. Uh, Echo Victor Papa Oscar Kilo. And we have, let's have a look, see where we are. 64 miles to run. And if I go back to my flight plan, which I apologize for you not being able to see. Uh, uh, so Balan to, we should still be at 35,000 feet. So top of descent. Is uniform November 859. So that's on the flight path there. So progressing quite well, uh, looking at Navigraph anyway, so so uh, do I click that? I really don't know that one. Close. Ah, oh, there we go. There we go. So you select it. And I think that's right. And um, Okay. It's a flight full of new things for me, this one. Okay, so now let's get back to uh, checklist, because it's all about the checklist, making sure that we're doing everything as we should be. And uh, I'd be the first to admit that there's much more to learn. Right, so ultimately we've checked radios. Uh, we haven't looked at the radio for a while. We need to tune Bordeaux, Bordeaux Centre. Contact Bordeaux Centre. Bordeaux Centre, BAW, Bravo, Alpha, 70, fight, fight, flight level 3, by 0. Right, so now we need to get the ATIS for LFBO. Do, 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 do. Let's come down here. And we're coming to the cockpit. Now, I believe what we do here is MCDU, ATSU, AOC menu, and we put a weather request in or LFBO. And now what we do is wait. Ooh, TCAS on standby. Huh. We should see messages come up here at some point. What have I done wrong with the TCAS? Ah, there we go. I think it should be on Tara. There we go. Should have done that. Needs to go on the checklist. 
unless I missed it. Right now, let's go back to our MCDU again. Uh, so we want weather and send. So it's sent. And we should get messages come up here at some point. jump back in the cockpit and we should see company messages there we go so back in the MCDU go back here received messages meta ah cool so we've got that so we can print that I think can we print it does it print there we go And now we can pop that there. Isn't this clever? Right, now, so we can start to... program in the approach. Enter destination data. Approach phase. Oh no, don't click that. Next phase. Um, right. Performance. Next. Next. Ah, next phase. Here we go. Next phase. Here we are. Right, let's just have a quick look up here. Make sure that we are still flying the approach or the route anyway. So what we'll do is take the arc back down a bit. So top of descent is still some way off. Uh, we can go back to the flight plan and we'll do that in a minute. So we've now in the weather here. So EGLL is where we've departed from and this is where we're approaching. So the QNH is going to be clear one zero zero eight so we'll enter that uh, temperature is going to be thirteen one three and the where are we 160 at five knots. One six zero slash zero five. I think this is right. Yep, that's fine. Uh, transition altitude. I'm going to put five thousand in there. I think mm. six nine six for the missed approach and transition altitude let's put 5,000 in or is it 10? I need to look that up clear clear 10 10,000 feet okay so phase so approach is programmed go around we have programmed I think right we don't want to activate approach phase yet because that would be a bit of a nightmare so we can go back to the front panel and flight plan let's get back in the cockpit and just check that we're still where we should be uh, we need to check for ice, but we would check the outside temperature in reality for that one. But we'd, we're not doing that at the moment. There's so much to do. So, ATIS, let's go back to the checklist. Uh, we 
have ATIS is done and programmed. Radio set. So we're good at the moment. We're with Bordeaux. And anti ice we've checked. And we've programmed in the approach. Uh, and that's interesting. Did we select? Let's go back to the flight plan. Yes, we did the approach. That's done. Uh, so the stars are standard arrival. Uh, radio and nav check. So let's go to rad nav. Something tells me we're ah we're out of range at the moment. So that's okay. So that we might get that a bit later. Okay so much I don't know so if you're following this and you know what you're doing I apologize because I'm, I'm just learning how to do all this all right so we've got something like uh, let's go back to the flight plan and have a look so we're currently on Narrack and D cell is about 13 miles away so and we've got constraints, I believe, of heights as we come in. So what we're not going to do today is the top of the descent because my tiny mind can't actually deal with that. But what we do need to figure out is at the top of descent, we need to descend to... Seventeen thousand nine hundred feet. Right. Okay. Be back with you shortly, and we'll progress our way into Toulouse. Decimal 375 BAW Bravo Alpha 7055. Okay, so progressing quite nicely on Navigraph anyway, so we're coming up to our turnpike 
turn point, which is Narak, November Alpha Romeo Alpha Kilo. And probably around about this time, if you have watched this and got this far, um, thank you very much for watching. This is our first kind of full flight. I may mean to do quite a few flights to try and master this over the next couple of months. And uh, so if you do fancy subscribing, please do. Most of the flights will be short haul because it's it, it's kept learning that part from takeoff to cruise to coming in to approach and land. So yeah, please do subscribe and if you've enjoyed watching some of this content, please do like, uh, apparently YouTube like that kind of thing. So I'll be back with you shortly, I'm just going to prepare for the uh, descent. Center BAW Bravo Alpha 7055 flight level 350. BAW Bravo Alpha 705 flight for no center. Continue to aim left as planned.
right, so not sure if this is right, but I've selected idle for top of descent, and that's automatically taken us to 3,500 feet per minute. So that's a solid nose down body angle, I would guess. How do I? I'm not going to press anything, but I was looking to see what the angle actually is for descent. So one thing we didn't do, I don't think we got actually fast enough during the flight, so I'm not quite sure. I need to look at speeds and that kind of thing, so. Uh, so we need to be 17,900 by Narak. Uh, what we could do actually is just bring that back a bit to Oh, we're fast approaching now. So let's go back to the flight plan. Fabulous. Oh yeah, because we've gone into the approach phase now. Hmm. Yeah, we definitely should have been a bit lower. So let's go back here. Let's deploy some help. Yeah, so I think this has all come up a bit too fast on me, so I'm not prepared for this at all. Ah, approach. Yeah, because I'm, I was too high for it. Ooh, turn approach off. Oh, this is all gonna go terribly wrong now. So, where are we? Yeah, this all happened way too quick.
Yeah, so we should be over the runway by now. Oh dear. Right, let's see if we can recover it. Right, so hopefully we can fly direct to Narak, which I don't think it's doing. Ah, oh, maybe, maybe. And then we can maybe pick up our approach from there. Oh dear, this isn't quite going to plan, is it? So I think where this went wrong was following the top of descent. I, d I don't think I had enough time to descend to the first, to Narak, between top of descent and Narak. So I have to work out after post flight what actually went wrong there. So what we'll do, we'll come back to Narak, uh, November Alpha, Romeo Alpha Kilo, and then go direct Do you know what? I think we might be able to make it from here. What happens if we hit approach? figure out what to do. I think no is the answer. Okay. Going to one, two, three, decimal, eight, five, so we've been given an approach. So if we just increase the there we go. So we seem to be descending at a rapid rate of knots. Which I'm hoping will slow up. Yeah, that's fine, it's doing that. So now, what we need to do then is... 
let's go direct Ablis. Looks like the flight plan's gone. Right, direct to Ablis, and then... We'll hopefully pick up the approach from there. So basically, we're talking about hand-flying this in now, I think. Oh dear. So now we go back to here. The pick up the ILS. There you go, that should turn into that. And now arm the approach. Hmm. There's a lot of unknowns here. Definitely way too low. I know what's happened. Let's have a look here, and if we look down here, the throttle isn't on controlled. There we go. There we go, so we're picking up now. So we should increase to 250, I guess. There we go, 250. So So we could seven nine TBS. So we'll go direct seven nine TBS. There we go, and that will give us a chance. down to 2,000.
And then once we get to, where was that? That was seven nine Tango Brava Sierra. We'll head direct uh, India Oscar one four Romeo, which should be hmm, should take us in, but I'm not sure. What a mess. Right, so the checklist has sort of gone out the window a little bit. So, but what we do need to do is try and play catch up here because the aircraft's way ahead of us at the moment. So, uh, tell you to set radios are checked, uh, fasten seat belts are on, landing lights are on, speed check less than 250 knots. Going to come down to 199 now. Engine mode is set to normal. Check. And now we need to go for. No, 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 no! Don't do that. It's going the wrong way. We need to go to that one. Has it picked it up? No. Maybe because it's in the... Yes, it has. So it's looking for the ILS on the runway. Oh my goodness, this is a mess. Okay, engine mode check, speed, sent ray, ND range check, cabin crew, 10 minutes. Toulouse approach. Barometer set, check, APU set as required. So, and in all the excitement, we've left the air brake set, which probably hasn't helped. So, back to the flight plan. Has that picked it up? No. Why is that not picked that up? Oh dear, what a mess. So we're gonna go one way.
happy if I get out of this because it's a bit of a mess at the moment. This is going to be a little bit of a... To try and get this together. So we can have slaps down. So it's definitely one four left. Ah, one four right, wasn't it? Okay, yeah, okay, that's good. Right, so glide slope. We're on auto, autopilot is on, speed managed. It's 200, so we can have another stage of flaps. Okay, so coming in on the glide scope, slope even. Right, what we need is some landing music. Right, gear down. I'd be amazed if we get away with this. Why can't I select maximum braking? Okay. Okay. 
140 feet. Next stage flaps. Oh, we are way too high. Or are we? I know, we're on the glide slope, that's okay. I don't think we'll have many happy customers from this flight. <laughs> All the guys in the maintenance depot that are going to have to actually fix the, the brakes. Oh my goodness, what a terrible ending to the flight. So let's just find somewhere to stop and park here. Yeah? Okay, so I think one of these will be fine. Let's go over here. terminal <laughs> right okay all right so let's see if we can finish this off with some sort of uh, organized organization because uh, it wasn't great Right, let's go back to the checklist and uh, I'm determined to finish this as expected so right so let's go through the checklist and so this was all the approach stuff which we didn't do and that didn't go right approach cabin check speed approach mode and it all went wrong from the bite uh, well, I didn't descend quick enough, otherwise it would have been fine, so flaps down. Right, so approach, this is all, all the bits and pieces that need to be done there. Uh, all of that would have been really fine if we'd managed to pull this off. But we haven't, so autopilot on there, thrust reverse, that didn't work. Right, so taxi, air brakes are, let's do that. That's fine. Disarm down, I believe that's right. Flaps are up. Confirm. Auto brake is off. Now that was a funny thing because I wasn't actually able to select auto brake and I don't know why. Uh, maybe I had to do that for the wheels came down. Don't know. Need to have a look at that. So now we need to uh, taxi nose lights. 
taxi while we've done that bit. Uh, nose lights. Done. Landing lights are off. So fiddly to get this to do what? The weather system is off, so that's down here we would, I think that's in the middle. And then we need to go back upstairs, the runway turn lights are off, off, which we didn't necessarily turn on in the first place. Uh, strobe lights are off. Off. Transponder we need to clear. So that's ready for next time. Uh, don't need that there, that there. Trim neutral. APU start is on. Start. Flight directors are off. Uh, Throttle will come off. Hydraulic pumps are off. So hydraulic pumps, I think, are here. So we want all the pumps off. Got a couple of mixed settings here, so strobe lights are off, nav logo lights are off, no smoking lights are off, batteries are off, air compacts are off, so this is the packs, are off, bleed air is was off anyway and the avionics which are here we off and external power is off Oh, we need to turn off the APU, I think. Huh. Well, that's as far as I've got on the checklist. So, obviously much more to do. Thanks for following along. Hopefully next time we're a bit more successful. Don't forget to subscribe and like, and I'll see you on the next one.